purpose, and plan in and through us to his greater glory. Okay. 13 goes on to say, it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Paul here was actually quoting Psalms 116.10, which begins with, I have believed and therefore I have spoken. This connects the apostle and the co-worker's declaration of faith with the psalmist's declaration of faith. Because he also goes on to say in part B of the verse, he says, since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore we speak. Paul and those, his co-workers also believed and continued to speak of their faith in Christ despite their suffering. And their suffering I'll get to soon, but not this moment. But the point being made here right now is that all of us who have, this, who have been saved by the same God have the same spirit of faith right. and should have the same declaration of faith. Right. Amen? Right. Right. Saints, if we can't say we believe, then we can't really speak confidently on any subject. That's right. Belief is what gives us the power to speak boldly. Therefore, before we can speak about the gospel with any authority, we have to believe. All right. And sad to say, that's why many Christians are afraid to witness because doubt, there is doubt in their inner being. All right. Their faith is not where it should be. Saints, you know, even before we got saved, and you know this for a fact, that when we knew something, without a shadow of a doubt, we was able to speak on it boldly. Amen? It's when we're not sure about something that we're afraid to speak about. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Now verse 14 says, because we know that the one who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Christ and present us with you to himself. Paul didn't doubt for one second that God who raised Jesus Christ, the first fruits of the dead, was going to raise him and us if we believe. Right. Saints face Faith must find expression. Yes. It cannot and should not be silent. Paul knew this, and because he knew it, he didn't despair even for in the midst of his suffering and trials and tribulations. Nothing was going to stop him from speaking. Even death-like trials the apostle experienced, he took as a prelude to resurrection power. But then Paul says, all this is for your benefits. All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to the glory of God. Everything Paul and the apostle did was designed to promote your salvation. The all this that he speaks about here was summed up in 2 Corinthians 11, where he speaks about the suffering and affliction that he went through to bring the gospel to those who needed to hear it. And Paul wasn't writing as a kindergarten in the school of suffering. He had an advanced degree. If you read about the Apostle Paul, he describes his particulars of suffering. And a lot of you know this. He was imprisoned. He was beaten. Stoned. Shipwrecked. He went through dangers in the waters. He was robbed. He was in dangers of his countrymen, yes. in dangers of the Gentiles. Now those are the people he was sent to preach to, but he was in danger of them. He was in dangers in the cities and in the wilderness. Saints, we know our cities are like wildernesses now. He was in danger of false brethren, and to this, to this day, we still have to look out for some of our brethren. <laughs> in weariness and in toil. Saints, most of us don't even crack a sweat unless we're praising the Lord. Unless the music is playing, we are. Today I saw people wiping away sweat. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he was, he was always, in, he was weary and toil. He was constantly toiling for the Lord. He was sweating, he was working. We crack a sweat when we praise and we think it's something, right? <laughs> Paul goes on to say, in sleeplessness, in hunger and in thirst, in fasting, Saints, we fast once or twice a year, we complain about we hunger. Come on now. Yeah, that's the truth now. There you go. Sometimes Paul was also cold and naked. And those were just the only physical outward suffering that he did. What about the spiritual burdens that he bore? What about the spiritual, attack, the spiritual attacks that he faced? And we know when we're trying to do something from the Lord, devil's always trying to, to, to attack us. Always trying to attack us. And Paul 